editing a photo in Lightroom can be scary and intimidating, but it really doesn't have to be. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can do basic color grading and edit your photo from your Mini 2 to make it look absolutely amazing in under five minutes. Let's not waste any time, let's dive right in. So just before I run through editing this photo in Lightroom, and don't worry if you don't have Lightroom, these color grading principles will translate into whatever program you're using for editing your photo. I just wanna say, if you like this video and you learned something new, please make sure to hit the like button. And if you're new around here and haven't subscribed and like drone related content, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. Make sure the notification bell's on so you don't miss any of my other videos. So I'm gonna be editing this photo. This is a photo that has come straight from my Mini 2. It is a raw photo and it's of a fantastic location, Blackhead White House in Northern Ireland. But as you can see, the photo looks a little lackluster. It looks a little gray, it looks a little drab. It's slightly underexposed. If you've ever heard me talking about exposure, I always slightly underexpose my images. I just think it gives more dynamic range and post. And I'm gonna show you how you bring that information out now. And I'm gonna to try to stick to under five minutes and show you really quickly how to edit this photo to make it look way better than it does now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is bring down the highlights and bring up the shadows. Because we underexposed the image, we wanna pull all that information out of the shadows. I'm just gonna bring the shadows way up. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an S curve. So I'm gonna add a point in the middle and then I'm gonna bring down the lower half of the S curve. And it's gonna bring that down to a point where I'm happy with. I'll maybe come back and tweak this in a minute. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up vibrance and I'm gonna bring up saturation just to a point I'm happy with. And already you can see that there's just so much more color and pop coming out of this image. Now it still looks a little bit too dark, so I'm gonna bring in a tiny bit of exposure. Exposure is one you don't want to really play about with too much. Bringing in too much exposure can really start to blow out your image and make it look pretty terrible. So I'm just gonna bring it up just a little bit. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in a little bit of contrast. The whites are standing out a little bit too much. I find that whites that are really, really white take away from a cinematic image. If you're going for a cinematic look, I've always found that more muted whites give that appearance. So I'm gonna bring the whites down a bit. And I'm also gonna bring the blacks down a bit just to make it contrasty again. I'm also just gonna have a play about with the temperature just to get a temperature I feel right. You don't want an image that looks too cold like this or an image that looks too warm. You just want an image that looks really nice and natural. Okay, this is looking great already. The next thing or slightly more advanced thing I wanna do is the blues just aren't really standing out much to me. The greens and the rest of the image I'm happy with saturation wise, I think it looks great. But the blues and the water just look far too gray. I, I wanna bring out the blues in that water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to color mixer and I'm gonna go to the blue section and I'm gonna start having to play about just to get something that I think looks good. So I'm gonna bring up the saturation of the blues and already you can see that that's making the C much deeper. I'm gonna have a, a quick go at bringing up the saturation in aqua as well as some of the area of the C here, well, I thought was aqua, but it's, yeah, okay, it is. So definitely down in around the bottom left of the image here, bringing up the saturation for the aqua really enhances the image. The next thing I'm gonna do is play about with dehaze a little. The dehaze feature of the Lightroom package I find just really can enhance an image sometimes. And so just by bringing up the dehaze little, I just find it really adds a more dynamic range to your image or what appears to be more dynamic range. It just makes the image look much deeper. Sometimes you can achieve the same uh, by increasing clarity. But in this instance, well, I, I was gonna say I don't want to enter just too much clarity, but I actually think just a little bit of clarity there is really bringing out the image. Texture is one I stay away with. If anything, sometimes I bring down the texture just a little. Again, for a cinematic image, you don't want it to be too sharp. And by bringing up texture, you can see just how much sharpness is in around the cliffs here. I just find that doesn't look good at all. I actually bring down the texture a little just to soften the image up. That gives it that cinematic look. And then the last step is to introduce a vignette. You just want a really, really subtle vignette. You really shouldn't be able to tell that there is a vignette there. But just a tiny little bit of a vignette really enhances the image. And if you've been following along, this is what we ended up with. Look how much better this shot looks if I show you the beginning shot and what we ended up with, with just a few simple steps on Lightroom. Now, obviously I haven't went into too much depth, which each of these steps I've taken mean. 
But that's because I want to show you that in under five minutes, you can take what is quite a drab, boring image and turn it into something that really pops and really stands out in Lightroom using some simple color grading techniques. So hopefully this has helped you. If you've liked this video and you've learned something new, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you're new around here and haven't subscribed, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and make sure the notification bell's on so you don't miss any of my upcoming drone related content. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.